Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In my tutorial videos on YouTube, I like to share tips on how to customize a Squarespace website using CSS. Now, CSS is technically a language, a code language, and it uses its own set of symbols to help a computer browser understand how to display the content of a website. Now, you might be aware of things like properties and values and selectors and some of those standard CSS terms, <laughs> but there are a lot of symbols that we use, and I wanted to create this video just to show you exactly what they are and when you're going to encounter them. You ready to get started? Let's dive right in. Starting with the comma, commas can be used to separate multiple selectors in code, so you can apply the same change to multiple things. The example I have on the screen right here is going to change both the H1 and the H2 text colors to red. See how we have that comma separating the two of them? That's one of the most common symbols that you're gonna see in CSS. Another super common one, the semicolon. This one separates property and value combinations inside a line of code. So if you wanna change more than one thing about an H2, for example, this is where we'll use the semicolon to separate the font family change and the background color change. Again, a super common code symbol that you're going to see. Next up, we have the curly brackets. This is in every single piece of CSS that you're ever going to write. Curly brackets are used to keep all of the changes you're making to a selector in one easy to reference place for your browser. I like to think that the left bracket is saying, here's the code I'm about to give you. And then the right bracket says, OK, browser, I'm done. So you've got to make sure you have both opening and closing brackets for every set of properties and values that you want to change for any set of selectors. After that, we have angled brackets or carrots. These are not technically CSS, but I think they definitely belong on my list. When you're adding custom code to Squarespace in a place other than the CSS panel, like page header code injection or an on-page code block, you need to tell the browser this is a style code. Angled brackets help use HTML to let the browser know you need to process this code as CSS. Next up, I wanted to mention the asterisk because this is one of my absolute favorites. An asterisk is like a catch-all that works really great for making changes to all of the elements that a property could be applied to within a selector. Hopefully that didn't sound too confusing if you're new to CSS. Here's an example for you. If I say form block asterisk font family poppins, the browser will understand I want you to change any font family inside that form block to poppins. So it'll work for the description, it'll work for the button. Anything within a form block that can have a font family is going to be changed because of that catch all symbol of the asterisk. Pretty cool trick, right? Now we also see the asterisk when we're making notes inside custom CSS. If you add a forward slash and an asterisk, you can add text or notes to your code that the browser will completely ignore. It's your easy way of saying, hey, don't look at this. And then you add an asterisk and a forward slash at the end and say, okay, I'm done. Here's more code. Here's an example of me adding a note that says, these are my homepage codes. Here's this. And then I added a little note that said, this hex color code is actually the light blue color. That way, when I'm referencing my code later in life, I understand what went where, but the browser is going to completely ignore that, so I won't have any syntax errors in my code. The next symbol I wanted to mention are parentheses, and these can be used in a few places in CSS. The two most common are pseudo elements and values. Pseudo elements can help you specify like the second one of these. This example tells a browser to give a top border to the second page section by saying nth child 2 but parentheses can also be used inside of a property line for specific values, like an RGB color code or a filter. Uh, here's an example where I've said, take this image, give it a 50% opacity filter and a background color of this RGB color, and it creates this effect. Again, I'm using these parentheses inside that specific value for that property. So those are the two instances that you're likely to encounter parentheses in your custom code. We also have the at symbol. I wanted to mention this one, very common for media queries, which tell the browser only apply this code when the screen is this specific size. This example right here is going to change the size of a heading one text to be 30 PX on any screen smaller than 640 pixels in width. That's where we've started it by saying at media, and that's where the at symbol is going to be used in CSS. You'll likely encounter a hashtag or pound symbol as well. Those are used to specify a unique ID for an object. Every single item in a Squarespace website is going to get a unique block ID. 
So if you're using this code to tell a browser when you see this specific object, make this style change, you're going to need to start that code with the hashtag or pound symbol, whatever you want to call it. It's a great trick for anyone using a personal plan to make a CSS change to a single item. You can add this to custom CSS for your whole site because it will only change that individual block ID. So no page header code injection required. So again, that's when you'll encounter the hashtag or the pound symbol to identify a specific ID. If you're using Squarespace version 7.1, you can also do this to isolate pages to just the changes to just the page by saying hashtag page at the start of your code. That means the code won't affect the footer of your website. It will just affect page sections in the page itself. I also wanted to mention square brackets. It's not very common in CSS, but you will encounter it sometimes. If you want to target a specific section or page section of your website, you might end up using its data section ID. This is a different and less common way of isolating something than a block ID, but it's super important to know. If you're targeting a data section ID, your code is going to look like this example right here. I didn't mention this in the beginning, one of the most common symbols you're going to see is the colon symbol. It's used for a few things in custom CSS. It's always used to separate properties and values inside a line of code, like this example here where the property is the padding and the value is 5px. So you're going to see it in pretty much every line of code, but you can also use it for pseudo elements and pseudo states, like making changes before or after an element or adding a hover effect. This code gives a hover effect to active links. It's going to change the background color of that active link to yellow specifically on a hover. So that's where you'll see that colon symbol. I also wanted to mention, last but not least, the exclamation point, a must-know symbol for Squarespace CSS. This is used along with the word important to make sure a browser prioritizes your code over any other code that it sees. Buttons are notorious for this. When you're trying to change the background of a button in Squarespace, the browser is going to see the site styles file, the color assigned from your design menu when you've selected to make this button purple. If you're trying to overwrite that, you have to add exclamation point important to your code so the browser says, oh, okay, this is the one I need to pay attention to, not the first one that I saw. So you'll often use an exclamation point when you're writing custom codes for Squarespace CSS. So that's it for my overview of the most common symbols that you're going to encounter when creating custom code for your Squarespace website. Are there more symbols that you use in CSS? Absolutely, but these are the most common ones that I wanted to make sure you understood how and when to use them. So if there are other symbols that you use in your code that I didn't mention in this video, let me know in the comments below. I'll have to do a second version later on. And be sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you can check out free trainings like this because I post a brand new one every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I took all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace and put them into one gigantic PDF. Available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.